Thank you for joining me today to learn more about working at CIBC. We have a panel today with both our HR reps and grads from CIBC who will share information about how to become a successful candidate, the various career pathways, and what life is like at CIBC. I'm excited to have with me today Provi Ali, Senior Talent Acquisition Partner, Kushagra Manchanda, Project Coordinator, Everyday Payments, and he is a graduate from our Business Admin Associate Degree Program. Um, we also have Rebecca Leeper. She is the Campus Talent Acquisition Coordinator, um, and she's a graduate as well from our Advanced Business Admin Diploma in Human Resources. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks so much, Trisha. We definitely are excited to be here and discuss really with George Brown students what life at CIBC is like, so let's get to it. Absolutely. Um, so I was looking at the annual top employer report published every year by Media Corps Canada and great to see CIBC on there once again. I think every year you're on there. Congratulations. It looks like you're included as top employer for young people, best diversity employer, top employer for those over 40. So well done. You're also one of our top 10 employers of our GBC grads with some with some close to 400 graduates in our database indicating CIBC as their employer as of last year. So that's great news as well. Provi, I thought we'd start by having you share with us a little bit more about CIBC and your division and why it's such a great place to work. For sure. Well, I definitely want to say thank you for, you know, the congratulatories there. And I know you mentioned the, the amount of that 400. Uh, so I'm hoping that we can continue yeah. that and really start continue that momentum that we've built so well. And to answer your question as to really why CIBC is such a great place to work is I think it comes down to really the culture and the people that we have uh, from any different line of business that I've worked with. Everyone's always very positive, open, supportive, and always there no matter what you need. So sometimes even if you don't have the answer, you could be reaching out to a different line of business. They're open to the conversation, open to hearing you out and seeing how we can really support one another. Not only that, I won't get into our benefits and our vacation and all the other great things that we do have to offer, but uh, really down to the development opportunities, culture and people would be my big three. Well, that's great. And I, I agree. You know, when you look at uh, all the accolades that CIBC has received over the years, even you're my bank. So I'm really happy to say that. Um, yes, I think it's a great environment to, to work in. You're, you're striving to really attract top talent. And it's good to see that our top talent from George Brown College is uh, those are those that you're choosing, so that's great. Um, Rebecca, I, I I know as the as someone who's a campus recruiter, what's involved? Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about what's involved with the hiring process at CIBC. What sort of jobs does the company recruit for? Yeah, for sure. I mean, our hiring process really depends on the roles. Uh, we have tons of opportunities here at CABC with so many different lines of businesses from tech to finance to HR to capital markets. It's a, we're a huge bank, so we have lots of opportunities. Um, generally, what happens is our recruitment team will go through all our applicants and go through their resumes. Uh, they may often, you know, have a touch point with the candidates, you know, get to know them, learn about their background, their experience. Uh, if that candidate does move forward, that tap, that recruiter will reach out and connect them with our hiring team. And, you know, their interviews with the hiring team could be one round of interviews, could be two. It really depends on the role. You know, our capital markets may have multiple role, uh, multiple interviews versus maybe HR may have one. So it really depends on the role. Um, and as I said, like we have so many opportunities, it's hard to just pick a few. Um, as working on the campus team, I work closely with our career programs. Um, and I think they're really cool and really special for new grads uh, because they're specifically designed for graduating students. Uh, we recruit a year in advance, so we recruit students while they're in their fourth year. And the idea of these programs is they're roughly a year to two years in length. They're often rotational programs, so it'll give students the uh, ability to, once they graduate, do different rotations in different line areas of their line of business. So a few that I really like to make note of are our commercial banking associate program, our financial advisor campus development program, and our private wealth management and Wood Gundy program. Uh, these are all rotational programs and they all give students once they graduate and an, an, a, a rotation, sorry, and an idea of different areas and different um, specialties in that line of business. And I think it's a great opportunity for graduating students. 
Absolutely. I think that, you know, these rotational programs are something that a lot of a lot of companies are doing them. I think it's a great idea. I know, I know the, the banks are all over it because it allows them to really get a look closely at a candidate to find the best fit for the candidate. And it just may, means so much to a graduate to test out these different areas and really find where they can they can add value and really shine. So that's great. Definitely. Um, yeah. Kushagra, you're one of those grads. Can you share your journey to CIBC? What was the hiring experience like and, and how well did GBC prepare you for success? Um, so for me, the hiring experience was actually very sublime, starting from the recruiter first reaching out to me all the way to the hiring manager giving me the offer letter. And everyone involved was very understanding to uh, me personally and understanding that you know I'm not great at interviews actually. And uh, I get nervous and they were very understanding to that fact and, uh, and they were very welcoming about that. Um, as far as the, um, sorry, the GBC, uh, how GBC prepared me for this was, um, I still remember when I was actually in George Brown College, uh, the first time when I visited the career counseling and met a career consultant is when I got this ball rolling on uh, my first resume and cover letter which was actually the one that I used to apply for my first job within CIBC as the financial service representative. So all thanks to GBC for helping me out and preparing me for uh, for CIBC. That's fantastic. I'm glad to hear we could help you get your foot in the door at your first job. Um, Rebecca, what was your journey like after graduation? How did you make it to, to how did you make your way to CIBC? And what do you enjoy most about working for CIBC? So my journey at CABC actually started before I graduated. I was a co-op student back in January 2020. I had two uh, co-op placements through uh, uh, George Brown. So my second co-op placement was with CABC. I was on a project team uh, for our new uh, building for CABC Square. And I was a co-op from January to uh, April 2020. I was actually brought back on after I graduated in August 2020 uh, to the same team as a contract role. So I was there for a couple of months and then I transferred over to talent acquisition with our campus team back in March uh, 2021. Um, one of the things I really love about CABC is, you know, their culture, like it was fantastic. Like it was a great, fantastic learning for growth, learning and growth. Um, one of the, it was something I noticed when I was a co-op student, uh, my team really worked closely with me to make sure I had the opportunities to learn and grow on my skills and when even when I came back, my manager sat down with me and helped me focus on, you know, my short term girls goals, my long term goals. He knew I wanted to get into talent acquisition and he really helped me make the connections to get here. And I think that was something I always really valued is like everyone here really is focused on your growth and your skills and helping you get to where you want to be. That's fantastic. I think that, you know, that's the new thing. If, you know, managers and companies realize if they invest in the staff and really you know help them to secure to secure the career path they want to to travel on it makes all the difference you're able to keep your staff a lot longer they're happier more productive so that is that's great i'm so glad that you had that positive experience um Provi, can i ask you a question about soft skills what what are the soft skills that make a difference in succeeding at the company and how do you identify those skills in new hires or employees for sure. So I think it goes back to really to those foundational type of skills, such as being someone who is self-motivated to someone who has strong communication skills and being able to really uh, communicate in an effective manner as well. Now, I know that a lot of the times, especially being a new grad or someone close to graduating there, you may not have all the box check marked. But it's more about how you're positioning yourself, presenting yourself and really showcasing where your interests lie and being honest and having a conversation about where exactly you see yourself going. So back to Rebecca's point about that piece about really helping to develop and having an understanding of the career path uh, individuals really want to take on. I think it's really important to be able to just really be transparent and mm -hmm. have those conversations and really showcase why this particular opportunity is of interest to you and why that's something that you can see yourself doing. And a lot of the times, even thinking about extracurriculars or what you're doing in school, they can be 
very, very relevant to the role. A lot of transferable skills goes to show. So having a strong foundation in that, in just uh, communication, being able to be transparent, motivated, those really go a long way. Yeah, and that, and you know, so many of those things are picked up in extracurricular activities or taking on responsibilities at the college when you're there, uh, joining a club, leading a club, all these different things that you can get involved in um, in order to build on some of those soft skills. So that that is great. Um, Kushagra, what do you love most about working at CIBC? And also, can you share what a typical day looks like in your role? So what do you enjoy in the role? And what are some of the challenges that you also experience in the role? Absolutely. So um, for me, something that, um, uh, apart from the things that Rebecca has already mentioned about uh, managers being invested and uh, all of those things. The other thing that I can mention here is that CIBC has great employee benefits, right? Mm. We're talking about uh, not only aside from banking and getting free checking and savings account, but other than that as an institution reimbursement, right? I am actually using that to get a certification for project management currently, right? So all of those things actually really come into play for developing and being, you know, invested in an employee and mm. making sure that, uh, you know, they stay with the company and uh, a fact here is that uh, my manager actually has been with CIBC for 33 years so wow. that just yeah exactly so that just goes you know that just says what CIBC really is and you know mm -hmm. how they're invested a typical day in uh, in my job actually really revolves around um, making presentation and presenting them to the senior managers uh, I work on the payment initiatives which uh, as you would know, Interact is, is a big one mm -hmm. uh, where we're trying to decrease the amount of time it takes for uh, transfers between uh, individuals down to five seconds. Mm -hmm. So that is, a, that is a big project that we're working on currently. Some of the challenges that I uh, face in the, in the current role is that sometime it can get uh, really challenging uh, juggling between different projects. Um, projects can, uh, they are very elaborate in our department at least and uh, sometimes it can get a bit tricky in terms of time management uh, which um, although they are challenging those challenges can be easily overcome after talking to manager which I've done multiple times and you know being honest with them and being upfront with them that you know I have these commitments let me take care of these and then I can get around to the other mm -hmm. ones that you want me to mm -hmm. so in all I really like the the job and the challenges that come with it. Well, it sounds like there are definitely some challenges, but really exciting ones, you know, that help you to build on your skills and in your capacity and in the role. So that's great. Um, Rebecca, what sort of when you're out there and you're you're looking at candidates, what differentiate differentiates one candidate from another? And typically, you know, I know you're probably looking at the resume first. Maybe you can talk about what you look for on the resume, and then what differentiates the can one candidate from another in an interview, for example. So I think on the resume wise, uh, you know, I know this was talked about a lot when I was a student, um, you know, connecting your resume to that job posting as much as, you know, we talk about it and, you know, you kind of roll your eyes as a student. It's really like seeing it as someone who looks at the resumes. It really mm -hmm. makes a difference. You know, we can tell when you dedicate your cover letter to us. We can tell when you pull the specific skills we're looking for. And that's something that will stand out and will kind of keep hold you to the side and move you forward to the hiring managers. Um, you know, we know experience can be a little tricky, so not everyone has the relevant experience for the roles, but mm -hmm. those transferable skills that you can pull from your experience and relate back, um, it really will make you stand out. Um, interview wise, I think, you know, researching the company, learning a bit about um, the role and maybe, you know, showing your enthusiasm really will really make you stand out. You know, if you you show your interest, you make yourself seem like you show that you're interested and you're excited about the opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. Hiring managers really find that special and we, we really love to see it. So that's something that I think would help the students stand out. That is, that's a key thing I think is just showing you really want the job, that you're excited about the possibility of working for the company. So that that is, that's a very good point. Um, Kushagra, what was the interview process like for you and how did you prepare for it? Oh, well, as previously mentioned, uh, I get very anxious during uh, interviews and I've done quite a few when I was first applying after graduating uh, Georgetown College. 
Um, so for me, when I first applied to CIBC, uh, I actually had a friend who was currently working in the position that I was applying for. So he told me that the hiring manager can ask questions that you might not know, uh, especially given the background. But um, you know, preparing for the interview and uh, and really going through with it, I think um, is the is the highlight of it. For me, other than that, I, I think the first manager that I interviewed with, he was very understanding and uh, it was just me and him. So mm -hmm. that really helped me in the interview process. Uh, how I prepared for it, uh, for me, as Rebecca mentioned already, researching is, uh, is a big part and uh, making sure that uh, not only I have the skills for it, but it is also something that uh, you know fits my, my career goals. So researching in depth, uh, starting from the job description all the way to mm. you know what the company really does and what the culture really is i think it really comes in handy another thing that i personally do is uh, sending out an email to recruiters after i've applied and you know telling them that i've applied for the position and if they can give me some insights about what it's really working what it's really like working at the company and in that particular role and um, i would say eight out of ten uh, I do, do get replies from uh, recruiters telling me that uh, you know your resume really fits or it doesn't. This is what we're looking for, that kind of thing. So all of these things, I think, um, really makes one successful in an interview, I guess. Well, uh, and you know, it's 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 being confident in yourself enough to reach out to a recruiter. And you know, it it takes a lot of people really nervous about that. But I think that you know, it shows that you've got that courage and you really want the job and. Um, a certain confidence, I think, that a company would want in any candidate that they're going to bring on. So that's great. Um, Provi, can you can you talk a little bit about the career pathways that that em employees can explore once they're hired into the company? How does the company support those employees to build those the, their career pathways? Absolutely. So just from even day one, having those conversations with your manager, you'll find it that it's a two-way street. It's an open conversation and there's always checkpoints with the employee from that first month to three months to six months. So we actually have something called year here called uh, my first first year is right, and that program really supports the initiative of making sure that when the employee is starting off, that we're setting them up for success. So again, from those conversations, from uh, those checkpoints with leaders, there's going to be conversations about development. So you're at your six month mar mark. What's working? What's not? What do you want more experience to? What are your challenges? Where do you see yourself going after this role? So having those conversations frequently and I would say keeping the ball rolling where, OK, maybe in the ne in the next couple months we chat again and see where you're at now. Has it changed? Has your career path changed or anything like that? So having that consistent conversation and flow is something that our leaders take pride in. And as an employee and I've been in a few roles now, I can say that all of my managers have successfully done this, which I'm really grateful about. And uh, so that consistent, transparent type of conversation, not only that, but as a leader, a lot of the times be, when you're speaking to your employees and finding out where they're interested in, you can use your own type of connections. You can use uh, really give your own advice, which I find leaders really tend to do and say, OK, I can see you fitting in there or you know what skill you'll need to work on a little bit more. Um, if that's, for example, if someone wants to get into a data analyst position and maybe they don't have those skills for Excel or other skills required. So being able to pinpoint that and working with your employee is something that we really, really take pride in. So really thinking long term goals and not even just short term about what the next role is for you, but really what your career path looks like at the end of the day. So it sounds like the managers are really taking on that mentorship role as well and really uh, vest investing in that that career development. That's yep. great. That's yes, really and great. even on that point there for job shadowing, it has been offered in the past for different type of roles where you're able to really observe firsthand really what it's like to be in a different role. And uh, especially for that way, you're able to see, hey, this is for me or maybe it's not and kind of pinpoint from there and find something else that intrigues you. So those conversations are continuous. Oh, really great. And it's, it's kind of, you know, you can sort of try on um, exactly. a different job and see if it fits for you. I think that's a brilliant idea. And it just, you know, I think a lot has to be said about companies that invest in really keeping their staff, really 
building um, a, a community for staff to feel like they really belong. So that's great. That's great. Um, yeah, Rebecca, what advice can you share with grads who are job searching currently and want to work in finance in general or CIBC specifically? So uh, one of the things I would generally tell anyone looking for a role at CABC is networking is obviously really key. Um, I know we do talk about that a lot and it can be scary, um, but, you know, I recommend students, you know, check out and follow recruiters on LinkedIn, follow and check out, um, you know, hiring teams and hiring managers who are in roles that you like, you know, it doesn't hurt to send them the message. It takes the courage to do so, but most of the time they respond and they want to they want to talk to you about the role they want to you know talk about the programs and the positions they have um, so just keeping an eye out especially following some of the recruiters on linkedin a lot of them post on linkedin about jobs they have about events coming up you know um, it gives you kind of an inside access to see the upcoming things rather than you know just scrolling through our our website um, no, no. you know and i do recommend you know attending events like for example, the campus team, we often have a couple events a year for our career programs, and we often have hiring managers that come for open networking at those events. So, you know, keeping an eye out for any upcoming events to attend and whatnot, like we're always, we always have something going on. And majority of the time we do have hiring managers, recruiters there to open network and to get to know you. So I think that like trying to keep in, up the interaction really, really will help you stand out. Uh, you know, and, and again and again, it's the networking, it's the networking, it's getting out in front of people. Um, Rebecca, where would someone find that information? Would they just go on to the CIBC site or where would they find so, out? Yeah, that? you can. I know for campus, we have all our events. If we have any going on, they're posted on our campus student and grad site. You can literally just Google CIBC students and grads and it'll take you there. Um, mm -hmm. Also, what you could do is even going on LinkedIn and just searching up recruiters names or people in HR and CABC and just playing around with the search engine on LinkedIn. Um, mm -hmm. You could do a lot with that, especially if you know, say you want to be in capital markets, mm -hmm. um, you know, searching up capital markets, CIBC and reach out to a few people. Worst case, they don't respond. Best case, they come back and say they're happy to meet with you. Right. Um, exactly. And a lot of hiring managers do. They love hearing from um, students. They love chatting with students. So it always doesn't hurt to just reach out and try and it's so true and i think that you know linkedin can sometimes be very underutilized and there's just so many opportunities for networking on linkedin it's insane so once you get the hang of it and you get comfortable with it um i i always suggest to grads get on there get busy uh reach out talk to people see what's happening join groups on linkedin lots of things you can do especially recruiters. I know a lot of recruiters who love to post on LinkedIn, love to talk to students. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. It's just getting over the the fear of posting and the fear of networking. Once you do that, it's it's it becomes a breeze. Yeah, <laughs> good. Um, Profi, I'm going to give you the last question because I know we're running out of time a little bit here, but can you speak more broadly about growth and trends in the financial sector, where it's headed, how strong is the industry and how specifically CIBC impacts the community? Of course. So in terms of growth and changes, I think we've seen in the past year and a half so many changes with the way we work every day mm -hmm. and becoming really a remote team as well for a lot of lines of businesses. So in where we're headed, I'm not sure if you got the chance to see. I know CIBC is your bank as well, but we've had a complete new rebrand, which we're really yes. proud of. Mm -hmm. And this, really the reasoning behind that as well is just the direction we're taking is more on that digital innovation space and mm -hmm. really thinking about our clients even more than ever about the different times we're having and being there for our clients for all those milestones that they're accomplishing. So making sure that we're taking that stance and continuing that momentum for relationship building, innovation, digital. And I, I believe you had a second question to that as well. Well, just wanted to know how strong, so the so that's the IBC, which is doing great. And I, I have seen the new um, marketing strategy and the, the new logo, and it's all really exciting. And you're right, uh, banking, like any other industry, has been a, in, affected quite a lot through COVID and it's changed the way that business is done. Um, and I just wanted to get a sense from you around the financial sector in general. I, I think it's pretty strong. Are you feeling it strong? Is there any 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 trends that that you've discovered that are kind of interesting we should know about? Oh, absolutely. I, I would say that 
right now is the best time really in the financial industry because there's so many different opportunities. It's not just really thinking about what traditional banking is, where you're thinking about bank tellers and financial service representatives and those who help you in the branch. There's so much more from um, being the space of security to talent acquisition to payments and a lot more really. Uh, so there's room for everyone. So I would say from working on different roles from communications to UX UI design to trust at officers and different different type of uh, roles within CIBC and in the bank overall. I would say the financial industry is definitely taking a turn in where they're continuously growing. We can say that we're busy more than ever when it comes to hiring and we're continuing that momentum of bringing amazing people to a really CIBC and I think it's going in the right direction and really stronger than ever at this point. So well, that is good news for all of us listening. Fantastic. We're just at time, so I want to thank you so much, uh, Provi, Rebecca, Kushagra, for joining me today and sharing some excellent insights into working at CIBC. Appreciate your time. Of course. Thank you so much for having us. We're we're so excited to be here and to continue this partnership with George Brown. We have had an incredible success and we want to continue that momentum. Wonderful. Okay, well, thanks again for joining us today. Take care.